Listen to what Obama is saying, everybody. This will give you chills. If it doesn't give you chills, I don't know what will. Because this is what's going to let you know exactly where the world is heading in general. Now, this video which you are seeing right now, which you are about to see, when this summit took place, where the North American leaders met. And yes, if you're in Canada, this affects you as well. Because at this very summit, Obama, he met with Justin Trudeau. And they are all on the same page. Let's break down what Obama is saying. First of all, the integration of national economies into a global economy. The first thing he says is the integration of a national economy is now into a global economy. Which means that which was once considered national, in other words, specific to a nation, is now gone worldwide, involving all nations of the world. Listen to this confirmation. He speaks with no hesitation and with full confidence. This should give you chills. Is into a global economy. That's here. That's done. And so the question is not whether or not there's going to be a international global economy. There is one. You hear the words and you can see the confidence in what he is saying. Obama is letting you know, regardless of what you think, regardless of what the citizens of the world think, a global worldwide economy has already been set into place. And it's too late to turn back the clock. There is no going back at this point. We are moving forward. That is what Obama is saying. In simplicity, they no longer are planning for new world economic order because it's here it's here and it's now all they are simply waiting for now is the right moment and right excuse to bring forth this agenda of the new economic world order they need a reason that they can give you this so that you will have no other alternative but to accept that which they present to you Please proceed, Obama. And we're building an inclusive society uh, in which everybody's got a fair shot. That's how we're going to solve these problems. Now, if you paid close attention to what he just said, that they are, quote unquote, building a system that is inclusive so that everybody will have a fair shot. I don't know about you, but that seems like capitalism is seeing its end and we are moving towards a socialist type of a government. And I hate to break it to you folks, but we are the last generation that will ever witness freedom and we are going to witness capitalism see its end as we enter into a new phase, a dark phase of earth and observe. Socialism promotes secularism. Whereas capitalism is pro-religious freedoms. However, what we are witnessing is that everything that points towards the worship of anything and any other deity other than God Almighty is what is being promoted now in America. However, if you have the words God bless America, you even put the flag or have the phrase that says God anywhere, that is considered a crime. Anyone that uses the Bible is now considered a hateful individual. Anyone who advertises using the name Jesus is automatically deemed to be promoting hate. So this new system of government is going to push away anything that has to do with God Almighty and replace him with secularism and promote things of the demonic nature. They may shout and say, you have freedom of religion but in fine print they say have every other religion except the one which deals with jesus christ they want nothing to do with the king of kings and lord of lords they want nothing to do with yeshua's name they want nothing to do with the true and living god so have every other religion except for that one which teaches the truth about the messiah anyone who promotes the teachings of the bible anyone who 
carries on the name of the Messiah is now deemed to be promoting hate and that cannot be acceptable. This is where we are heading as a nation. Let's continue listening to what Obama continues to say. So we're, we're going to keep on pushing hard to shape a, a, an international order that works for our people. How much does America want to invest around the world? Uh, we, we're seeing a new world order now being built, a post-World War II world order. And I don't think America can retreat from that. I think we have to balance and adapt and adjust uh, to the realities and the currents of this new world order. But Here is the catch. They already gave you the hint as far as what must happen in order for a new world order to be presented. They need chaos. They need chaos so that out of that can come forth order. This is their emblem. This is their motto. Order out of chaos. And this works hand in hand with that which is known as the Hegelian dialectic. This Hegelian dialectic was first introduced by Sir Wilhelm Frederick Hegel who stated that if you have a thesis there must be an antithesis or antithesis and the resulting solution shall be the synthesis. What this means is thesis equals problem, antithesis equals reaction and the synthesis equals solution. Observe right now America is in a state of civil unrest. Riots are beginning to sprout everywhere in America because of the injustice within the law enforcement agency. The corruption which is within that system has gone too far and America is now on the verge of an uprising. But what many people fail to see is that this is exactly what they actually want. When you think about it carefully, this is what they want. They want a civil unrest to sprout in the United States of America, in the streets. Because once this happens, then a nationwide state of national emergency will be declared by the United States President. When a state of national emergency is declared by the United States President, the Constitution becomes automatically suspended and martial law becomes into full effect. This also directly leads the United States presidential elections to be seized. When the election is seized, that means whoever is the current acting president of the United States becomes and remains the president. Ultimately, if this were to happen with Obama, Obama becomes the president to continue acting as the president of the United States of America, which ultimately then means Obama ain't going nowhere, which ultimately means he is continuing for a third term. When this is declared, martial law becomes in full effect. Once martial law is declared, there is no going back because now you are under the rule and mercy of your superiors. My heart goes out to the women and children in those times which are coming. My heart goes out to them. This is a very difficult time to be a mother, young mothers especially. The time of separation is coming. The way things are going to be governed is going to be way different. And I'm trying, and I'm not saying this to scare any of you. I'm just being real with you. I'm being completely honest with you. My heart goes out to the women and children. Because if you thought that corruption is bad now with the law enforcement agencies, wait till martial law is declared. You are going to see corruption like never before. Women are going to be raped. Children are going to be molested. Men who are straight will be raped by homosexual men within the army. In case you did not know, maybe it's time you figured it out by now. Homosexuals have taken over the high positions of authority. They are the ones who are governing the world you live in. Homosexuals are everywhere. That is a given. The cities which we are living in, we are within the walls of Sodom and Gomorrah. In ancient Babylon, King Belshazzar insulted God Almighty by throwing a party and celebrating with thousands of his lords. And within this celebration of theirs, they drank happily with the holy vessels which were sacred 
and were supposed to be within the temple of God. They used the golden cups and golden bowls to drink their wine. Within that same night, the bloodless hand of God Almighty began to write the fate of Babylon and of King Belshazzar on the wall. The writings on the wall declared that the king was found a wanted man before the sight of God and that his days are numbered. And at that very night, the Medes and Persians would capture the Babylonian Empire. The Medes would be led by Cyrus the Great and Cyrus would ultimately put an end to Belshazzar's reign, bringing forth the reign of King Darius, the first king of Medo-Persia. One of them came from the east and the other came from the west and they both merged together and the Medes and Persians would capture Babylon, thus fulfilling Nebuchadnezzar's dream in which the head of gold would now be replaced with the arms and chest of silver. The two arms are crossed together because it represents the two kingdoms that came together and merged, one from the east and another from the west, thus fulfilling the prophetic dream. We are in 2016 and we are within the walls of Sodom and Gomorrah. Just as the writings on the wall declared the end of Babylon, we are living also in those days where the writings are being written on the wall yet again, saying time is up, time is up. The bloodless hand of God is writing within the walls of Sodom and Gomorrah in 2016, warning God's children, it's time to flee these walls, it's time to leave because destruction is coming. These cities have already rejected God. I'll tell you what, when your leaders are telling you that Jesus is not welcome in the cities, if they say that if you want Jesus you have to leave the city or go outside into the forest or somewhere, you know what? If they deny Jesus and say he is not welcome in the city, his presence is not there, I would not want to be in that city. I would not want to be where they say God is not welcome because that ground is cursed. Anywhere that God is not welcome is cursed. Any place that you go, if God is not invited, if God is not welcomed in that place, in that atmosphere, it means that atmosphere is cursed and it's infested by devils. And in this case, I would rather leave the city and be in the countryside, close to the forest and be closer to my God rather than to stay in a city that has banished the name of God and wants nothing to do with Him. Because that is a cursed place. What we are dealing with, ladies and gentlemen, the new world order is something that is cursed. The new world order is strictly satanic and demonic in every single way. This is a system that has been carefully orchestrated by Lucifer himself. This is a system that is going to aid the devil in persecuting God's children. He wants to be worshipped and he's going to have that worship. He will demand worship of you. And if you do not bow down and follow his rules, you are going to be slain and persecuted. The image of the beast is very close to its completion. Pope Francis is making yet another appeal. I'm going to describe this in another video all by itself. But on July 16th, there's going to be a gathering of all religious people, or all Christians should I say, to come together and they want to promote togetherness. This movement is called Together 2016, led by Pope Francis. Ladies and gentlemen, great changes are taking place. Great changes are here. And these changes are not going to be for the better. It's going to be for the worse. The only way that you are going to be able to make it through the upcoming ordeals is for you to be in a much closer relationship with your maker than ever before. This is the time to make sure that you are right with God. This is the time that you have. We are free right now, but it's only for a moment of time. This is the time that we, I, need to be closer to God. You need to be closer to God like never before. This is the hour that we need to practice prayer and fasting and spend time reading the word of God. If you stand up for your father who is in heaven, now he will stand up with you and by your side in the time of trouble. 
if you choose not to stand up for him now, if you choose to forsake him, the time also will come when you will stand by yourself and you are going to have to face the wrath of God. Do not fear him who has power to take your life away from you by destroying your body, but fear him who has power to destroy both body and soul. Get ready because time is up. This is the Controversy 7. Thank you for tuning in and for joining me. Stay tuned, subscribe. If this is your first time tuning into this channel, please subscribe because there's a lot of information coming across your way. This is the time that we need to wake up. This is the time that we need to be spiritually awake more than ever. This is the time to get ready because Jesus Christ is coming soon. Whether you believe it or not, that is a given guarantee. Whether you believe it or not, whether you accept it or you don't accept it, the Lord Jesus Christ is coming. The question is, will you be able to stand? We need to pray and make sure that we are right with God so that when he comes, we will be amongst his elect. This is The Controversy 7. Thank you for joining me. Until next time, you take care of yourselves and stay safe.